Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching and I'm back in my classroom on my smart board at Seattle Academy and I'm going to do a calculus problem. Technically it's like a physics problem but I'm going to be doing it in a calculus method I believe. Okay, We have a balloon that's rising vertically. We have a balloon that's rising vertically at 8 feet per second. So we've got a velocity there, an initial velocity at time zero. Keep that in mind. And we've got a stunt person that's going to jump off at 64 feet, when it's 64 feet. We want to know two things. How many seconds will it take to fall? Let's assume when it hits the airbag that the airbag's height, that this imagine this airbag down here as this person jumps off, is has got a height of zero. So we're going to really look at it as height equals zero when um, at the time equals zero. And also that we're going to have an initial height, an initial height of 64 feet. So we've got basically an initial speed. Okay, of going up 8 feet per second, up 8 feet per second here, and then we're going to start at the initial height of 64 feet and drop down to the bottom. We also want to know what speed, what's the velocity that we hit. Obviously it's going to be a down velocity versus the positive 8 up velocity, so think of it that way. So I'm expecting the velocity to be a negative answer coming down. There's one thing you've got to know that maybe from a uh, physics class or possibly just from reading the examples in the book, they'll probably have some demonstration where they'll remind you that acceleration based on gravity is 32 feet per second down, negative 32 feet per second. So this is kind of a starting piece of knowledge that's not in the word problem that we've got to have. So if we look at position function and the second derivative of position function, the second derivative, Okay, is my acceleration, which is negative 32 feet per second. Now, we're going to start integrating. We're going to back up. We're going to back up from the second derivative. And I want to think of it as I am going to integrate, based on time, dt, integrate both sides of this equation. If I integrate both sides of this equation, I will have my velocity, my velocity. Okay, and that will be a negative 32t, a negative 32t. So this is my velocity as I'm coming down. Okay, now don't forget when we integrate, we have some sort of plus c. But since this is my velocity, okay, at time equals zero, like we said, what was my initial velocity right there? It's eight. So you can look at that, that this c is eight. The c is eight. So negative 32 plus 8 is the initial velocity. So hopefully that makes sense. If I put in t is equal to 0 here, then that would kick out when the velocity is at 0, I'm at 8. And you can see that if that's the case, then c would be 8 there in the equation. So here we have our particular, our particular, not a general, but our per particular first derivative. Again, we want to do the integration. I want to get back to position based on time, based on time. So let's see what we've got. We've got a position, whoops, excuse me, got a position function here, okay, S of T, based on time. What position will I be at? Starting at 64 feet, I'll be down at maybe 32, obviously, and 16, it's a continuous function, and I should get down to zero eventually, and this is the calculator for it, the plug and chuggable, as I like to say, for this one. So if I was to integrate, integrating, I would have negative 16, t squared, don't forget, if you add 1 to the exponent, divide into the coefficient that we had as negative 32, plus 8t plus some sort of initial constant, some sort of starting point. I always like to teach my students that that's a starting point there. Not just a y-intercept, but in a lot of problems, it's our starting point. And as I said before, I could jump the gun here and say our starting point's positive 64 feet, but I want you to understand that time is zero still. So time is zero. So if I plug and chug that at time equals zero, it's supposed to kick out 64, thus c is 64. Now I have both a position function, a position function, a particular one, a very particular one, which is an upside down parabola. It's going to have two x-intercepts. Keep that in mind. Okay. And I also have a velocity function. I have a velocity function back up here. So both questions can be answered. The first thing I got to do is I got to figure out at what time, at what time did I hit the ground? If I can figure out what time it is, then I can plug and chug that into the t right here and get my velocity from my velocity function. 
Boy, I hope that makes sense. In a quadratic formula, in something, maybe you've got a program that's called quad form. I try to put that on my, some of my students' calculators. So maybe you've got something which kicks out the answer that we've got one plus the square root of 65. The square root of 65 divided by four. I believe that's what the quadratic formula will kick out in exact form. And this ends up being about one of the answers. We're, we're removing the negative. Technically it's plus or minus, but that would give us a negative value. And we don't want that part of it. We don't want this part of the equation. We want to know from the time starting down, we want to know this timeline right there. So what we have now is we're going to have this to be the positive one. So not the negative, but the positive answer there. And that's the 2.2, I believe, 66 seconds. That's how long it took for the stuntman to hit the airbag there. So if you know that, we can come back in and plug 2.2 into this equation. So if you want to know the velocity, S of T, velocity, excuse me, S prime of T, first derivative, okay, you need to plug and chug the negative 32 coming down, negative 32, or 2.266 seconds, okay, plus the initial speed of 8 going up. So think of that as kind of like vectors or maybe river currents where one's going up and the other one's starting to push down over time and gets more and more powerful because we're multiplying times the negative value. So you can see at time zero, if time here was zero right there, I'd be going positive eight. A second later, I'm already at a negative speed. When I get the ground at 2.2, I'm at my full speed as I hit the ground. And that answer, I believe, is negative 64.98. I didn't pull out a calculator and double check it. I hope that that calculates with you as well. Um, so that is our answer for what the speed is in feet per second. So by the time I'm hitting the ground, think about that. I'm dropping 64 feet for every second. That's pretty fast. Also, it took 2.266 seconds to hit the ground. I'm David from Electro Teaching, and I hope that I have helped.